just run over this perfectly adequate G5 like that. Why not? Well, have you heard? It's hashtag Marchintosh. Well, it was, but now it's April 1st. Anyways, I guess us Apple users wanted something to compete with hashtag Junamador. Just imagine how many subscribers we'll get from doing a pretentiously late Macintosh video for an April Fool's gag. Oh yeah, hashtag Marchintosh, right? I almost forgot we got invited to participate in this event by Dave from Dr. Dave's Diversions. Dr. Dave's Diversions is great! If you like old computers, you should go over and check out his channel on YouTube. A link will be in that description. Well, I'm not much of an Apple person. I don't even know the first thing about them. I think we're going to need a Q briefing. Okay, well I've done some research on these, so I'll make it an X briefing this time. The Power Mac G5 was introduced in 2003 with three models sharing the same physical case but differing in features and performance. They all used the PowerPC 970 processor with 64K instruction cache, 32K L1, and 512K L2 with a 1 GHz bus capable of offering 8 gigabits bandwidth in total. Wow, powerful. But that's not all. Let's go over the graphics capabilities. The Power Mac G5 came with either a GeForce 5200 Ultra, 6800 Ultra, or an ATI Radeon 9600 Pro or Radeon 9800 Pro with 64, 128, or 256 megs of DDRM. Are you listening, 0016? Oh, um, yeah. Wow, that's an eyeful. Nice pun. In terms of memory, the G5 had 256 megs of PC2700 DDR for the 1.6 GHz single processor configuration and 512 megabytes of PC3200 DDR SDRAM for the 1.8 GHz and above configurations. That's it. That's the end of this video's X briefing. There's much more to know about the G5. We've only covered just the basics here. I hope you are paying as much attention as our Patreons, who support our channel on Patreon.com. I was. And it's true. For as little as $1 a month, you too can support our mediocre at best contributions to the vintage computer community, and have your name listed in our videos whenever we list the patrons. As a special bonus, if you pledge any time before March 17th, 2021, You'll also get access to our video series on why setting deadline goals are important. That's right, and don't forget, annihilate that like, like button, destroy your mouse when you smash the subscribe like. button, and harness the four winds of Antioch to obliterate that notification bell. Now that the unobtrusive and shameless begging is over, we can now actually do something useful with this ancient relic. What did you have in mind? Well, we're gonna fix it. It's broken? Well, in a way, yes. Each one of these came from the factory with a fresh install of Mac OS X on it. But we can put Morph OS on it and make it behave like an Amiga, which increases the usability of this hardware by thousands. Hey, it's hashtag Marchintosh. You told me I had to be nice. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, so it increased the usability of the Mac by just a large enough number to not offend our Mac viewers. <laughs> See? I'm being nice. Okay, well, let's get started then. City Man. Hey, Morph OS. That's right, it is Morph OS. And it's, um, it's made by a bunch of demo and, and scene people. Look at that. They're, they're people from the Commodore community. Well, they made the RTG graphics. Yeah, so I guess Picasso was probably, probably there. They're doing. Oh, cool. Oh. Alright, so you, you need to make sure that you download the ISO here, even though we're going to put this on a USB drive, that USB image is a trap. Alright, that's for specific hardware, and if you're doing it on the G5, you need to download the live CD and put the live CD on a thumb drive. They should make that more clear on their website. Probably so, but I mean, you know what, if you're, if you're an Amiga person, you can probably figure it out. <laughs> 
Oh look, USB boot and installation guide. Maybe it's something in there. Well, they do talk about that in there, yes. One of the things that they, they talk about is you put the ISO image on your thumb drive, and then you mount the ISO image in your computer, and you drag out the right boot image, a specific boot image depending on what model G5 you have. Yes. And then you put that on the root of the thumb drive. So are the steps listed step by step? It is. They do give you a step by step instruction. Oh, right. So, so even preparing the USB. Right. So you just, it just really amounts to navigating to a folder, copy the file, paste it in the root. This is specifically for the G5 model that you have, right? Yeah, so G5, G5s with ATI cards are pretty much the only people that can play uh, here on the, for Morph OS, as far as in the G5 family. Uh, I think for, um, for some of the Mac Minis and some of the other, um, other Power Macs. Uh, now, here you need to um, interrupt the system. It's a little bit like the Windows F8 interrupt. And this uh, is like, it'll bring up a firmware? Yeah, it'll, it'll bring up the, um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it'll bring up a firmware prompt. But I had, I had a little bit of difficulty getting the, the timing right of the key presses. Uh, the, the other thing is if you don't have an Apple keyboard, you can use your Windows keyboard and use the Windows and key. And so it'll tell you what to type in to get the boot image to load. Right, once, you, once you've got the um, firmware up, yes. Then it'll bring up uh, an installation. Right, and that's standard installation stuff. It's just all localization. You know, what's your keyboard, what's your, what's your language, what's your time zone? 2114. That's right, they're forward thinking. <laughs> what is all that? Well, that's all partitioning the, partitioning the drive and Ethernet. I think we were talking about uh, your system having that Wi-Fi built in, but it doesn't at that point. Yeah, yeah I, I still don't know if that's the case, if it doesn't have Wi-Fi or if, um, if Morpho has doesn't detect it. You know, one of these days I need to crack that thing open and clean it and take a look at what's in, inside. And installed and rebooting now. Nice. Yeah, and it boots, I mean, this is just, it's masterfully quick. I mean, it's just, it's amazing well, how quick it boots. Well, I did edit it quickly. Well, I know you edited it, but even unedited, this thing boots in no time. Yeah, it does. Just running some system software that came with MorphOS. Yeah, th these are all just the built-in utilities and tells you what you got. Look, two CPUs, yay. <laughs> and you know, it's good to know what the um, what the bus clock is. Oh, now wasn't this um, touted as the fastest computer at the time? Yeah, I, I think it, I think it was. And, and and it's good to know. Um, it's good to know that bus clock because that comes in handy every day. Let's see, diamonds. Diamonds. This bejeweled. Start. Oh, you gotta get all the pieces off. Wow. 
Uh, I guess you can move any two or more. Now, diamonds, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got on the internet. Well, look where I, where I am in it. Look, look at that. And, and we've already filtered Aminet to show us just uh, Morph OS binaries. And that kind of sometimes works. Oh, Aminet can do that? It can. <laughs> Look, we're, we're downloading, I think that's a demo that we downloaded. We downloaded several things, but I think the first demo didn't even work. 236 works. Two th yep. And we had to go get a library for it, didn't we? Oh, yes, PowerSDO. Yeah, we had to install a library. What's cool about that, though, is that it came with an installation program, right? right? No, no hand dragging it to the libs folder. Yeah. Which, when that first came up, it was like, you know, it's been so long since I've done that on an actual Amiga, that am I going to drag this to the right folder? And then I thought, oh, there's an installer. I don't have to look down on camera. Ah, oh, shit. Well, another old vintage computer converted to a Commodore compatible machine. Looks like my work here is done. For now. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you have a G5, let us know in the comments below how you're converting it to a Commodore. Also, make sure to stay tuned to our channel if you if you like the hijinks and shenanigans because we're, we're working hard on the new adventures of Clicky and Friends. Uh, we have a special, um, a special inverted surprise coming for you, so, so look for that and, um, and be excited. And um, we're going to be making some more retro programming videos, uh, some random hardware and software videos. We might stream Satisfactory for two days straight again. You know, just all the things that you're sure to enjoy. So until next time, this is Sam here with CitiZen. <laughs> And, well, I, I was kind of, yeah, that, that might be it. And I'm Deadline from City Zoom, and thank you for watching, you know. Oh. Yeah, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> comment juice, people, comment juice. Make us a comment. That's right, you need to put comments down below. Maybe, maybe that's what we should do for next year's April Fool's is we just probably shouldn't suppress our accents none at all. <laughs> well, I don't figure we just got us a new Commodore computer. <laughs> we just gonna put it up here on this this here task bench. I was wondering why she's talking all fancy like. You go in yonder and you get me that screwdriver. <laughs>